Hey class, how are you today? As you can see, my background's a little bit different. I snuck into the office to get away a little bit from my family because I had a million advising appointments today. You might be able to hear on the PowerPoint the notifications coming through. I was trying to record it between advising sessions, so sometimes I got interrupted while I was doing it. Uh, it's been kind of hard to concentrate and focus today, um, but I know what you guys are going through, and you know I'm not complaining either. Um, let me just bring up a couple of points before I get into the lecture. Uh, first off, um, there is a discussion board post for today, and there will be one on Thursday as well. Um, both of them, I think, are going to be pretty simple and easy. Shouldn't take you too long to do. But I've really enjoyed the ones that we've had. I really like the content examples you guys shared. I agree, a lot of what you shared was really just great content. And I did that on purpose, you know, without really defining it, because a lot of times, content is personal. Content is things that we can't necessarily put our finger on. You know, why is it that a bunch of photos of puppies doing funny things is great content? I don't know, it just makes us feel good. You know, some of the other things that you posted to, there were a lot of different ways that you define great, and that's good. And that really goes in line with what we're talking about, with what our coordinates are and what our strategy is. So your def definition of great content needs to really revolve around those two areas. There is one more thing that I forgot to mention. On April the 9th, we are able actually to keep our guest speaker. Uh, I spoke with Nolan Walker the other day online. Um, he's working from home right now, so he said he'd be open to speaking with us through Zoom. I was thinking we'd just do it our normal class time, which would be 10.30 on Thursday, April the 9th. If you can't make that date, let me know. Um, if I hear from enough of you, I'll consider changing it. This, uh, this will not be a mandatory thing. I really hope as many of you connect on the Zoom call as you can, but I'm not going to make it mandatory because I just, I know some of you might be working or there might be things that preclude you from joining the Zoom call with us, but if not, I will have a discussion board set up so that you can ask him a question beforehand um, and you'll get credit for that whether you attend the Zoom conference or not. But please attend the Zoom conference. It's really great that he's being, he's willing to do this for us. As far as other kind of housekeeping things that were going on, um, my goal is tomorrow to finish grading your interactive conversation assignments. I think I've gotten all caught up on your presentations. I still need to enter the grades for the team evaluations that you did, but that's my goal to finish that up as well. So I think we're all almost all caught up as far as that goes. The next assignment that you have is actually, I think I might have stated it incorrectly in the last video, but it's not due until April the 10th. So you've got almost two weeks to work on that. And it's going to be a short video assignment that you create for social media. I'll make a quick video on Thursday to give more specific details about that. But for today's lecture, I'm going to talk a lot about what makes great video content and how you can do that. So without any further ado, I will jump right into the lecture. I titled this presentation, It's All Video Now, because I think that's a trend that we're seeing. Almost every social medium uses video as a way to bring the audience in. We're going to talk specifically in this lecture on ways that we can create effective content using video, and even some specific tips and tricks, and a specific application that we'll use to help us make a video that will be really impactful on our social media followers. But first I wanted to ask you the question, why do you think video has taken over? Is it because we have the bandwidth and the speed now? Is it convenience because we have our phone in our pocket and it's easy to watch a video? Or has something really fundamentally changed about us that make us want to watch video rather than listen to the news or listen to something else? That's what I want you to talk about on the discussion board today and tomorrow. Um, include your opinions on this topic and comment on two other people's and we'll see how this conversation goes. On Thursday I'm going to make another short video to provide specifics on the assignment that's due next week and I'll summarize some of your comments in that video. Last week we talked about great content and now let's apply video to that typology that we created. Let's ask ourselves first off how can video be feedback driven? Isn't video a one-way medium where we present content and our audience doesn't have a chance to talk back to us? I don't know if any of you have watched Tiger King on Netflix, but to me that's an example of how great content can be feedback driven. 
there has been so much written about the people in Tiger King, the interesting situations that have been presented. You know, even some of the people portrayed have come back and said, oh, this is not how the documentary, uh, this is how the documentary portrayed me, but this is not how I am. And it started a great conversation. And a lot of what we can do on social, even with one-way content, is create a conversation that ends up being feedback-driven. Great content is always coordinate aligned. I guess we need to ask ourselves, how can video mesh well with our coordinates? How can video help us achieve our goals? And for that, we need to know what makes video a unique medium to be able to understand its impact on our goals. In the same respect, we need to understand how video impacts our audience, how they're using it, how they're watching it, how they want to use and watch it, and what they want to watch. So we really have to be sensitive to our audience. And as we learned earlier, the more that we know about our audience, the more that we'll be able to create content for them, specifically video content. It has to be category apportioned, meaning we have to do the right kinds of videos and the right amount of videos. We can't just overwhelm and create a video for everything. If a video doesn't work for something that we're doing, it doesn't make sense to create it that way. And it's going to turn off our audience, it's not going to meet our goals, and we're going to get some pretty crummy feedback on it. And by the same respect, it has to be appropriate for the channel. I guess I've seen video on Reddit, but that's not a place where I think to make videos. But if I'm making something for Facebook or for Instagram now, I need to be making videos. I need to get really involved in things like Instagram stories or Facebook watch. Earlier I talked about what is it about video that makes it unique. And here's four kind of key points for it. First off, video is really good at portraying motions and emotion. We want to see people moving. We don't want to see video of just someone talking to a camera. And we don't want just flat commentary. We want to see people kind of get involved. I mean, going back to Tiger King, there's so much emotion, so many great B-roll shots of tigers in their natural habitats or in the cages that he puts them in. That's what makes video great. We have to find ways to do that. We also have adapted as a society where we want quick video, things that we can watch while maybe we're doing something else or that provides a background for us. So we have to think about ways that we can do that as well. The key point here is take advantage of what makes video unique. A lot of people point out that the rise in video started with the tasty effect. Now there were videos before this, but Tasty really kind of captured our attention, whether you like it or not. It was started by BuzzFeed in 2015, and now it accounts for about 75% of the traffic that they get from social media. If you've seen any Tasty videos, you know their formula. You know there's a lot of overhead shots, um, a lot of shots of people's hands doing things. Those are deliberate. They want you to see the recipe. They want you to feel like you're part of what's going on. Tasty videos almost always end with what they call the money shot, where you see the grilled cheese sandwich being pulled apart and the long strings of cheese. These kind of shots that make you really want to eat that food. This is one of my favorite Tasty videos, uh, and not just because I'm a fan of Terry Crews. Not only do you learn a nice recipe, uh, and I've made this recipe, it's pretty good. They use the recipe as a vehicle to tell you some interesting insight about Terry Crews as a person. Video can be more than just recipes. It can really connect you to something important. Tasty was created specifically for Facebook. So as we talk about channel apportioned or channel appropriate, that's what they were thinking of. What are some quick hit square videos that people can watch? And something that they don't need sound for. Now their specific channel has 30 million followers and this is more views than their dedicated food site. This is also an example of how deliberate BuzzFeed is when it approaches the platforms that they're on and what content they put on it. This is the first live video they did. Um, this was from a little while ago, but you see, this live video got over 10 million views, almost 11 million views, and it seems like a really dumb thing. We're just putting rubber bands on a watermelon. But again, it was very well designed to be something that people wanted to watch live and were willing to stick with through the end. They wanted to see that watermelon explode, and BuzzFeed follows this formula throughout what they do. But it's not just BuzzFeed. There are a lot of news organizations that are using social video now to connect with their audiences and to provide information. And when I said the BuzzFeed effect started in 2015, you might be able to even point to the Now This effect 
that started in 2013. Now this wasn't as big then because they started only on Instagram and all of their videos were 15 seconds long. They were really focused at that time too of sharing the news to this segment of the audience to you know 68% of their audience between 18 and 34. They were so successful at this you can see now they do a lot of videos a lot longer videos. This picture that I have here is a clip from a now this video that they created from an Alton Brown video. Like other things they're finding compelling videos and putting their own tags on it and getting people to talk about it. Here's also some examples of how Legacy and other news organizations have followed suit. CNN, Entertainment Weekly, those are the Legacy organizations. They do a lot of these social videos with um, just music playing in the background. But look at some of these other ones. Um, ATTN is a really interesting site. They're very focused on environmental issues and informing people about how they can make a difference. Um, and most of their videos are created with stock footage, but they tell a really important and a really compelling story. And then 60 Second Docs, I actually have an example that I'm going to add to the video here that I want you to watch because they do a really good job of telling compelling, interesting stories in just 60 seconds. They use a lot of really interesting shots in the video, and they don't have a narrator. They let the subject of the video tell his or her own story. This product is for when you have an intruder in your house, and the lights are also out, so you're able to put a candle on. I'm Matt Benedetto, I'm 29 years old, and I'm a non-existent problem solver. I create products that could help you but they're just completely unnecessary to have or use. I'll sort of create an idea, and then I'll go over to my 3D uh, software, and I design the product. It's really satisfying to just think, how could I make the stupidest thing I ever heard of? And this is a way to eat with your mouth open, but be more polite in public. I'm not actually trying to sell these products, but I love tricking people into thinking this is a real product. People don't really take the time to dive deeper into what they see on the internet. They immediately hate it. I'm just having fun. Hopefully my products make people appreciate the problems they have after you see a very unnecessary way to solve it. And that becomes an important point of how we can do this. How we can make really compelling and interesting social videos. First off, we have to think of the medium, both video as a medium and the platform that we're going to use. Second, a lot of times how we use social media can provide a good indicator for how others will use it and consume it. So think about how you like to watch videos online, think about what types of videos you like to watch online, and then try to create something that you would like. Other key concepts are things like the length, how long do you want it, usually shorter is better, Size and shape, do you want it to be widescreen or do you want it to be square? Or there's a new trend that's taking over that you see on IGTV where like vertical video, um, where you take the, the widescreen and tip it on its side so you can watch it on your vertical phone. Do you want sound? Is sound important to it? Or is it okay to have no sound? Or do you want both? Um, now this does some really interesting things where most of what they do is doesn't have sound, but when there's a really compelling quote from somebody they're talking about, they'll pull that out and make sure that you can hear that. And they'll also use subtitles to emphasize that. And so we have to think about what we're going to do with subtitles. What do we want to put on there? What font do we want to use? What color? A lot of times even the color can be branded with what you're doing. Now this uses their characteristic yellow a lot in their subtitles. So you know this is a now this video. Also think about who's telling the story. Why is it important to let, allow the subject of the story to tell his or her own story? And then finally, think of your equipment. If you're shooting this on a phone, it's going to be different than if you're shooting it on a digital SLR camera. There's nothing against your phone. Your phone can shoot really, really good video. You just have to think a little bit about how you're going to get that, especially some of the detail shots that you're going to need to really keep people's interest in your video. Other key tips, and I have my little dog friend here to help me, and you'll see why in a minute, but I think it's really important to allow the source to tell their story. This is, I think, one of the conventions of online video and social video. The social element of it makes us want to hear from the person on camera rather than a reporter. And by the same token, 
make sure that there's compelling images. It's not just someone talking to the camera. Think of the 60 second doc that we watched. There was a lot of him talking to the camera, but that was interspersed with lots of shots of him doing things. Lots of the products that he was creating, his 3D printer going in and printing that, the creation process, the design process. And that's what really drove the story forward. Not just his quotes, but those images of what was going on there. When you use subtitles, be bold. And as a rule of thumb, I say, don't put more than six words on the screen at a time. This might mean that you have multiple screens of words for one quote. That's okay, it actually adds a little bit of motion to your video that will keep people's interests. You can also use color and logos and perspectives to emphasize points. You don't always have to put the text, for example, at the bottom of the page. You can put it near the top. You can put it near their mouth if that emphasizes a point. As I said before, now this uses color instead of just bold to emphasize points. And then finally, this is where our dog friend comes in. The broadcast folks talk about see dog, show dog. So when you hear a dog bark or when someone talks about a dog, you see video of that dog. We also talk about that in the sense of cut to the word. So when someone says dog, right as they say it, that's when you cut to them showing a dog. This is an important concept in social video as we use what people are doing to tell their story. So go back to the 60 second doc that we watched. You know, when he was talking about the brass knuckles with the candle holder on top, you saw him holding that and holding it kind of fearfully up to his face to really emphasize that point. I said earlier that a lot of social video is made not just with video that you've shot yourself, but with a lot of still images and a lot of stock footage. And I wanted to give you some links to sites that you can go to to access and download stock footage. These are all really good ones. If they don't work here on the video, I'll make sure there's a link on Blackboard. But the other point that I wanted to emphasize is this idea of Creative Commons. These are all sites where the content that you can get are, it's free and it's licensed for you to be able to use it in a project like this. Creative Commons allows creators to determine how their work is used on their own. Each of those symbols on the bottom is part of the Creative Commons license. So the first one denotes this is a Creative Commons item. The second one denotes if you can share this. The third one denotes if you can use this for commercial purposes. And the last one denotes if you can take this content and remix it and re-edit it. And those are all things that the creator can decide for him or herself whether they want to allow with their video. The other thing that's really important with Creative Commons is attribution making sure that you state who the source was because a lot of the point behind sharing content is getting your name out there and if no one is getting their name your name out there then the point of sharing is kind of missed for mobile video video editing we're i'm going to encourage you to use adobe spark this should be free now because of some of the concessions that adobe has made for students uh, because of the coronavirus uh, epidemic uh, but there are other tools that you can use, and I'm not requiring you to use it. Uh, if you have an iPhone, Apple Clips is a really interesting program. Um, it will automatically add subtitles for you. Video Leap is a mobile editor that works both on Android and Apple devices. And then going back to Adobe, but I've actually started using this quite a bit. Adobe Premiere has a mobile version both for Android and for iPhones. And if you have a Creative Cloud account, you can sync your mobile content with your desktop content and make it really easy to edit and go back and forth. When you, If you then decide to use Adobe Spark, make sure you use the Adobe Spark video application. Uh, you can also do this online on, on the web if you want to too. You don't have to use your phone. And I have just a short video that I downloaded from Adobe's site that I'm going to uh, play here so that you can see how Adobe Spark works. Honestly, that doesn't need a huge tutorial. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, and I'll address this a little bit more on Thursday, but here's a quick introduction to it.
When we get around to actually using Adobe Spark for our projects, here's a couple of things that I want you to remember. First off, make your video square. This is for social media. Make sure then, too, also that you give credit to anyone who helped or any media you used. It's going back to that Creative Commons license that I talked about. And make sure that you keep the video under one minute. Adobe Spark actually makes this all really easy for you and even adds this last little bit here to encourage you to give credit to those people who helped you. I hope this helps out. I hope you learned something from this. I'll be back on Thursday with a little bit more specifics about the assignment. That won't be a long video. Uh, we'll also have another short discussion board post uh, so you can get credit for watching these. Uh, but then next week will be pretty much dedicated to you working on your projects and to our guest speaker. Thanks again and have a great day.